Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about itraconazole. What is this drug itraconazole? The suffix azole indicates this drug is an azole antifungal. But here we should not consider the suffix simply as azole because we have few of the other drugs with similar suffix such as metronidazole, omeprazole, cotrimoxazole. All these drugs having the similar suffix azole, but these drugs are not the azole antifungals. So here we can identify azole antifungals with proper suffix which is nothing but conazole. Even they are commonly considered as azole antifungals, but the suffix conazole indicates they are azole antifungals. We have many of the drugs within this category such as econazole, Miconazole, fluconazole, variconazole, all these drugs are having the suffix conazole, which indicates they are azole antifungals. This itraconazole is useful in the treatment of oncomycosis. This is one of the fungal infection that affects nails, and this infection is caused by two types of organisms: trichophyton rubrum, otherwise trichophyton mentagrophytis. So these two organisms can affect the nail resulting in the nail infection. Suppose this is the normal toenail which can be infected such that it becomes like this. So discoloration of the toenail is one of the symptom in the oncomycosis. Otherwise the nail bed can be ruptured or it can become brittle as well as thick. All these are because of fungal infections produced by trichophyton species which is treated by itraconazole. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about this itraconazole, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, contraindications and drug interactions of this drug we will discuss in this video. First of all, that is the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of itraconazole. We can see a large structure just like the ketoconazole. But the ketoconazole is having the imidazole rings, whereas itraconazole is not having the imidazole rings. Instead of imidazole ring, we can find these heterocyclic ring systems. These are nothing but trizole rings. So itraconazole is having the two trizole rings instead of imidazole ring. By introduction of trizole rings, the water solubility is going to be improved, which improves the bioavailability. Now let us see how this drug acts. So this is the fungal cell. Within this fungal cell, one of the important lipid is the ergosterol. This ergosterol is going to be synthesized within the cell. Then it is going to be incorporated into the fungal cell membrane. When this ergosterol is incorporated, it produces the rigidity to the membrane such that fungal cell membrane cannot be ruptured easily. But for the synthesis of ergosterol, one of the precursor is required, which is nothing but lanosterol. This lanosterol can be converted into ergosterol by one of the enzyme lanosterol 14 alpha demethylase enzyme. This is one of the enzyme belonging to the cytochrome P450 family and this can convert the lanosterol into the ergosterol. Now lanosterol can interact with this enzyme such that it can be converted into ergosterol and it is incorporated into the fungal membrane. In this step, one of the methyl group is going to be removed from the 14th position which converts the lanosterol into ergosterol. Now, itraconazole is one of the drug which can inhibit the ergosterol synthesis within the fungal cell. Now, this drug can bind to this lanosterol 14 alpha demethylase enzyme, which makes it inactive. So, in presence of itraconazole, lanosterol cannot be converted into ergosterol. In this way, itraconazole can inhibit the ergosterol synthesis, and when these ergosterol levels are reduced within the fungal cell membrane, the cell rigidity is going to be modified which results in the increased breaking as well as leakage of the cell membrane. This breakage of cell membrane results in the loss of important components of the fungal cell, which results in the fungicidal activity. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of itraconazole is on the cardiac system. Normally, heart is going to contract to produce sufficient cardiac output, but itraconazole can produce negative inotropic activity, which results in the decreased force of contraction. 
So in presence of etraconazole, there is decreased cardiac output, which results in the congestive heart failure in the patients. So this is one of the important precautions that should be considered. So if a patient is already having any risk factors for congestive heart failure, in such people, etraconazole should not be used because this drug increase the negative inotropic activity. Similarly, if you have the drugs like CCBs, calcium channel blockers, such as verapamil, diltiazem, these two drugs again produce a negative inotropic activity, thereby they can increase the risk of congestive heart failure. So when these drugs are combined with itraconazole, the risk of congestive heart failure is more enhanced. Similarly, itraconazole can also inhibit the metabolism of calcium channel blockers. So in place of itraconazole, the plasma levels of calcium channel blockers are increased, which results in the pronounced negative inotropic activity. That's why this combination may increase severe risk of congestive heart failure. So in the patients already having any edema or symptoms of congestive heart failure such as fatigue, congestion, in such conditions, itraconazole should not be given. Another important precaution of itraconazole is that this drug can produce some peripheral edema as well as pulmonary edema. Again, these two conditions can further increase the congestive heart failure. So care should be taken to monitor any edema that is developed in the patients. Similarly, itraconazole can also affect the liver and it can produce hepatotoxicity. This drug can elevate the liver enzymes. So liver enzymes such as SGPT as well as SGOT levels are increased within the serum. And it can also produce some liver failure, even death in the patients. Even this hepatotoxicity is rare, but care should be taken in order to monitor any liver abnormality in the patients. What are the side effects? The important side effects of itraconazole that affect nervous system mainly include headache, dizziness, and it can produce upper respiratory tract infections which results in fatigue, cough, stuffy nose, sore throat. Similarly, pain can be produced at pharolaryngeal pain and elevated liver enzymes can be observed because of any hepatotoxicity. Gastrointestinal side effects like abdominal pain, nausea can also be observed. It can affect the heart resulting in sinus bradycardia and it can produce some back pain in the patients. What are the contraindications? Just we have discussed that itraconazole can produce negative inotropic activity. That's why one of the important contraindication of this drug is congestive heart failure. So in patients having any symptoms of congestive heart failure, this drug is contraindicated. Similarly, this drug is also contraindicated in the pregnant woman as well as in patients developing any hypersensitive reactions or anaphylactic reactions. In such conditions, again, this drug is contraindicated. What are the drug interactions? Normally, the bioalbut of the drugs depends on the absorption as well as the metabolism. So they can be absorbed through the GI tract. The bioavailability of the drug depends on the absorption as well as metabolism of the drug. Now at the GI tract, if you have the pumps are present, which are the P-glycoprotein pumps, which are the afflexing pumps, which can afflex the drug out of the intestinal membrane, such that the drug absorption is going to be inhibited. Similarly, the bioavailability of the drug is mainly affected by their metabolism within the liver, where the CYP3A4 is one of the important enzyme which is controlling the metabolism of many of the drugs. Now, in presence of peak glycoprotein, protein, the drug absorption may be reduced. And even the drugs are absorbed, they can be metabolized by CYP3A4 enzyme. But here, itraconazole can increase the bioavailability of other drugs when it is co-administered because itraconazole can inhibit the activity of peak glycoprotein pump as well as CYP3A4 enzyme. So in presence of itraconazole, drugs can be more absorbed and they are less metabolized, resulting in the increased bioavailability of the drugs. But as the bioavailability increase, it also results in the increased toxicity. So itraconazole can increase the plasma levels of other drugs, resulting in their toxicity. One of the important drug interaction exists between quinidine as well as itraconazole. Quinidine is metabolized by cytochrome P450 system and one of the important enzyme is the CYP3A4 which is going to be affected by itraconazole. So in presence of itraconazole, the metabolism of quinidine is inhibited which results in the increased activity of quinidine. Quinidine can produce some hearing loss in the patients. So in presence of itraconazole, the hearing loss is more pronounced because of inhibition of its metabolism. 
Now, since citraconazole is inhibiting the CYP3A4 enzyme, this drug can affect metabolism of various drugs such as cisapride, ergot derivatives like ergotamine, ergometrin, statins like lovastatin, CCBs like felodipine, quinidine, simvastatin, trizolum, midazolum, methadone. Metabolism of all these drugs is going to be affected by itraconazole, which results in the serious adverse reactions. That's why itraconazole should not be combined with these drugs and it is strictly contraindicated. Similarly, we can also observe the drug interactions between itraconazole and enzyme inducers. This drug not only inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme, but it is also metabolized by the same enzyme CYP3A4. So, few of the drugs such as carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, similarly anti-HIV agents like nevirapine, anti-tubercular agents like isoniazid, rifampin, all these drugs act as enzyme inducers. They can induce the metabolism of itraconazole, which results in the loss of activity. How it is given? Itraconazole is available as tablets as well as capsules. This drug is given for fungal infections of toenail and the dose of this drug is given as 200 mg once daily and the treatment is continued up to 12 weeks to produce complete recovery of toenails. This drug should be given along with the meal at the same time every day in order to produce better therapeutic actions. So that's about this itraconazole. Itraconazole is an azole antifungal which can be identified by the suffix conazole and this drug is having trizole ring systems instead of imidazole ring system. Because of trizole ring, the water solubility is increased which improves the bioavailability of this drug. But this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having risk for cardiovascular disorders. Since this drug is going to reduce the force of contraction, it can increase the risk of congestive heart failure. So in such patients, this drug is contraindicated. Similarly, this drug can also produce some hepatotoxicity. So care should be taken to monitor liver functionality. Upper respiratory tract infections, headache and dizziness are the important side effects of this itraconazole. So that's about this drug. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.